make some footprints using paper from a magazine like this. Fold it in half. And then fold it in half again. Then on the top edge, just use a pen to round off the corners like that. Then draw an arch in the middle like that. Then you can cut around the top where you've rounded off the corners like that. Cut along the seam like that and then cut out the arch. Like that. Now these aren't people footprints, these are the sort of footprints that a horse or a donkey might make. And I'm going to use them in my story. Perhaps later you can have a go at making your own footprints, make up your story too. Once upon a time, very very long time ago, there was a fine, very sleek, very strong, and very speedy horse <laughs> called Marcellus. Marcellus was indeed a marvellous horse, and he was also a very, very proud horse. And so he liked to look his best. He liked to be groomed until his coat shone and his mane flew in the wind. <sighs> but he wouldn't let just anybody groom him. If you were not the best groom, if you were not the chief groom, then he would kick <clears throat> and bite <clears throat> until the best groom, the chief groom came. You see, only the best was good enough for Marcellus. Marcellus also insisted on wearing the very best saddle and the very best armour because he was not only sleek and strong and speedy, but he was also a magnificent war horse. And so his saddle had to be of the very finest leather and shine like a diamond and his armour had to be made of silver and gold and be polished so bright that it would dazzle like the sun. Marcellus was a very very proud horse indeed, a horse fit for a king a horse for conquering heroes. And he belonged to an equally proud man called Pontius Pilate. Pontius Pilate was extremely important and he was to be sent by the Emperor of Rome himself to be the governor of Judea, near the city of Jerusalem, a very important job for a very important man. On the day that Pontius Pilate was due to arrive in Jerusalem city, Marcellus was groomed and his saddle and armour polished. So bright was Marcellus that if you looked at him your eyes would blink because you'd be dazzled by his brightness. Marcellus was to carry Pontius Pilate and lead a procession of warriors and extremely important people into the very heart of Jerusalem. 
He felt so proud. He knew all eyes would be on him. The people would lie in the streets and as he trotted in, sing and cheer at his magnificence. The people would talk about his brilliance forever. So much Sellus and Pontius Pilate on his back trotted in to the city of Jerusalem. Marcellus leading the procession. But there was silence. No one lined the streets. No one sang his praises. No one saw how marvellous he was and no one remembered. The proud war horse trotted into the city unrecognised and ignored. Marcellus left his footprints leading into the heart of the city, but no one saw them. No one remembered them. And soon they were faded and gone, like they had never been there at all. Now, not long after this, on the outskirts of the city was another animal, a young donkey that no one had ever ridden, an animal only fit for carrying sacks of hay or bundles of stick or, or even <laughs> rubbish for the tip. Not fit for a person to ride. A beast, oh, a burden, stubborn and slow and rather mm, silly looking. An animal fit for the dirt track or the back alleys. Not an animal for a fine procession. His name was Zedekiah. And Zedekiah lived in a shabby cattle shed where no one bothered to groom him or clean him. He wasn't important enough. He wasn't owned by anyone important. He was not special, just a poor donkey in a poor state. One day, Zedekiah was tethered to a post outside the stable, feeling a bit miserable and useless, as usual. Then two men came and untied his rope and took him away. His owner didn't seem to bother that much, and what was going on? His grumpy owner didn't seem to care, so Zedekiah went along. He was taken to a group of very ordinary looking people, maybe a little bit shabby like him. One of them came over to him and put his coat gently over Zedekiah. Now he, he, he didn't look special or important, this man, but he did seem kind. And he did give Zedekiah his coat. You know, maybe Zedekiah thought, I might let him ride me, my first ever rider. And he did. You know, the rider looked like just all the other people. He looked very ordinary and a bit shabby, but when he spoke, his voice was very calming and his touch was very gentle. Zedekiah, the shabby, stubborn little donkey, didn't resist, but let the man ride. And he heard the man was called Jesus. And Jesus rode Zedekiah along with the other group of people that were with him, a slightly shabby and dishevelled group, and they processed together into the heart of the city of Jerusalem. 
as they approached the city. People began to come out of their homes and line the streets in their tens, in their twenties, in their fifties, in their hundreds. More and more people came along. They were smiling at Zedekiah. They were waving at Zedekiah. And then some began to sing songs of praise and joy and happiness. Some of them even put their coats and soft leaves in front of him, like a beautiful carpet for him to trot along on. The songs got louder and louder. Welcome to the king, they sang. Welcome to the one who comes in God's name, they sang. And the crowd seemed to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And the little shabby donkey had never felt so loved. In a way, he felt proud. Proud to carry this ordinary looking, slightly shabby, gentle, loving and kind man, Jesus. No, not a man, thought Zedekiah, the little donkey, not just a man, a king, my king. And not very, very, very far away from that point, a very proud and very sleek and very fast horse heard the singing and heard the cheers and thought, well, that must be a glorious animal, a glorious king indeed. And the little donkey, well, he did leave his footprints into the heart of Jerusalem. And everyone saw, and everyone remembers, even to this day. The footprints of the little animal that carries burdens carried the king that promises to carry our burdens. The king that promises to lead us as a servant. And today we remember the king who rides into our hearts the servant king riding on a donkey. Our king, Jesus. All those years ago, a great crowd of people sang songs of praise to the servant king, Jesus. Perhaps they were singing because they knew it was great to have a king like Jesus, a king who would always hear them when they talked to him, a king that would always be there when they needed him, a king that would always love them forever. Perhaps they thought it would be great, great, real, real, wicked, wicked, skill, skill to have a friend like Jesus. Shall we sing a song together? Great, great, brill, brill, wicked, wicked, skill, skill. Follow the actions and dance along. 